we're wrong. Us gamers aren't getting Volta. We might just be living in the post Volta age already. Even if most of us plebeians never got to actually touch one. A little over a week ago, we released a video asking where Nvidia's next generation of gaming cards are. In it, we went wild with speculation, partly because information about next gen GeForce was essentially non-existent, and mostly because we're just so freaking amped to see how Nvidia will follow up with their phenomenal Pascal cards. One of the very few things we were almost 100% sure about at the time was that the new GeForce cards would be based on and called Volta. After all, the Titan V is already on the market and Nvidia's official roadmap didn't include anything other than Volta for 2018. In the same video, however, we touched briefly on a rumor that stated that Pascal's replacement would not, in fact, be called Volta, but something called Ampere. At the time, we didn't think too much of it, since it was the rumor with seemingly the least meat on its bones, and chose not to dig deeper into it. But maybe we should have, because once we took a good long look at some of the speculations making the rounds, some of it is actually pretty compelling. First, we need to take another quick look at what NVIDIA Volta really is right now. As NVIDIA states on their official site, Volta is a new GPU architecture built on the 12 nanometer process that's designed to bring AI to every industry. The Tesla V100 was the first GPU to be built on the Volta architecture, but it's the Titan V that excited consumers and scientific researchers the most, even with its utterly ridiculous $3,000 price tag. The Titan V proved unequivocally that it's the most capable gaming card the world has ever seen, beating out everything that came before it without even breaking a sweat. But the fact remains that it's not a gaming card. Even though it pushes out more frames than our little hearts can handle, that's not what it's built for. Volta is built from the ground up for AI and machine machine learning applications. It features specs that simply don't make all that much sense for gaming. It features a gigantic die size, 640 tensor cores that are almost exclusively used for scientific and data applications, and uses expensive HBM2 memory that hasn't yet proven to be all that much better for gaming than GDDR5 or 5X. Now, it's entirely possible that NVIDIA's next-gen GeForce GTX cards are based off of the Volta architecture, only with the scientific and expensive bits cut out. That's what we originally assumed would be the case back when we were released our first speculative video on the subject, and that might still be the case. But what's also pretty plausible is that Nvidia has something else entirely up its sleeve for the gaming market. There have been many rumors surrounding Nvidia's upcoming GTX cards, and few have been more popular than those about Ampere. If that nomenclature sounds familiar, it's probably because you read the many, many comments in our last Volta video that went something like, the new gaming cards will be Ampere, not Volta, you absolute morons, unsubbed, unlike 10 out of 10, hate your stupid face. And they might just have a point. Ampere might indeed be what gamers are in store for. The first idea that actually makes sense is that the Volta branding will remain on cards that are built for scientific endeavors like the Titan V or the Tesla V100, while the gaming focus cards will be released under the Ampere name. Doing so could clear up a fair bit of confusion and further drive home the fact that the cards aren't built for the same purposes. It should be noted, however, that doing so would be a departure from what Nvidia did with the current generation, where all cards are considered Pascal, regardless of application. Quadros, Titans, GTX, doesn't matter, was Pascal. This is largely because all Pascal cards are built with the Pascal architecture. So if next-gen GeForce cards are built on the same Volta architecture as the Titan V and the like, it would be a little weird to call them anything other than Volta. But as another theory goes, Ampere might be an entirely new architecture in its own right, different from Volta. The Ampere architecture might well be specifically built with gaming applications in mind. Many believe that cutting Volta down and reducing its ludicrous die size to work as a gaming card just doesn't make sense. The theory states that we're more likely to get the new Ampere architecture that will skip the 12 nanometer process seen in Volta entirely and instead being built on a much smaller and much more efficient 10 nanometer process. Just like the gaming Volta rumor, Ampere would also ship with many of the advantages of the current Volta architecture, like more faster CUDA cores, but without all the scientific oriented features. You just cut them right off. Even if Nvidia isn't scaling down to the 10 nanometer for Ampere though, we could see an adjustment similar to what AMD is doing with Ryzen. We could be getting a 12 nanometer plus revamp of Volta that simply heavily refines the architecture and improves upon the things that Nvidia has brought forth with Volta. A Volta refresh, if you would. Yet 
Another theory states that Ampere is simply the name given to the architecture that will supersede Volta. Since NVIDIA is partial to five-year roadmaps and the current one ends at Volta in 2018, we're due to see a new one announced sometime soon. If the theory holds true, we might just see Ampere pop up somewhere in the updated roadmap and not in the current one. That's why we don't have the name. And then the worst rumor of them all, and the one that I don't believe hardly for a second, is that we're not getting anything more than Pascal 2 Electric Boogaloo. The argument for the rumor essentially goes this way. NVIDIA has weak competition in the market for Pascal right now, so rather than extend their domination with an architecture bump, the most sane financial thing to do would be to drop a refined Pascal that beats Polaris and Vega more handedly without bringing in the massive amounts of R&D dollars that it costs to bring out a new architecture. As much as I don't believe that NVIDIA is the most benevolent and customer-focused company on the planet, I don't think they'll be stringing us along like this. Pascal will have been out for two years by the time we get the new set of GeForce cards, and it would be a rough PR move for them to show that even though they have a new architecture in Volta, they're not going to be bringing it out to the average gamer, even though we account for 60% of their revenue. They're already drawing the ire of gamers by not upping production of current cards to meet the mining demand, so I doubt they really want to stoke the fire with another move like this that would be completely tone deaf to their customers. But whether NVIDIA's next-gen gaming cards will be scaled down Volta, scaled down Volta under a different name, or Ampere, or even the horrendous Pascal refresh, we do know at least one thing with relative certainty. Relative, they'll use GDDR6 instead of HBM2. Samsung officially announced after we released our previous video that they've begun mass manufacturing the new memory standard, and that we'll see it implemented into early launches of next generation graphics cards and systems. The new GDDR6 memory will apparently ship with a 16 gigabyte density, will offer 18 gigabits per second pin speed, and should be capable of 72 gigabytes per second transfer speeds. It'll also be about 35% more energy efficient than GDDR5, operating in 1.35 volts as opposed to 1.55 volts. Samsung also claims that with all of its improvements in density, performance, and energy efficiency, the 16 gigabyte GDDR6 will be widely used in rapidly growing fields such as 8K Ultra HD video processing, virtual reality, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence. These improvements will undoubtedly mean significant boosts to gaming performance, and unfortunately for GPU stock, should also bring a substantial boost to mining performance. Even if Samsung isn't referring to NVIDIA's upcoming cards, it's highly unlikely that the company's next-gen cards will ship with HBM2. While the HBM2 memory used in current Volta cards and in AMD's Vega lineup has its advantages, it doesn't boost gaming performance enough to be worth its higher cost of production. And as for when we can expect next-gen GeForce Volta, or Ampere as it were, to be announced, no one knows for sure as we mentioned in the previous video. Most fingers point to something along those lines to be revealed at NVIDIA's own GPU technology conference held between March 26th and 29th. Though the conference is primarily focused on deep learning and AI, it's not too unlikely that they'll announce a new gaming GPU between all the science-y stuff. If not, then there's a chance that NVIDIA will hold its own special event dedicated to unveiling the card, or it could be done at Computex. Either way, the likelihood of the cards being made available to buy at or around the time of their announcement is pretty low. We're probably going to get a paper announcement. It'll likely be a month or more after that until the first cards start hitting the market. Because GDR6 just came into production, so you have to put it on the cards, it's going to take a little bit. While we're still riding this speculation train, choo choo, it's also not impossible that we might not get new gaming GPUs from NVIDIA at all this year. We are due for a successor to Pascal this year if we look to previous green team releases, but the simple fact is that NVIDIA doesn't really have to release any new desktop gaming cards. They already have the market essentially cornered at almost every price point with Pascal, and since AMD has basically resigned from providing any real competition this year, that won't change anytime soon. But while not impossible, this theory is pretty unlikely, especially considering Samsung's statements about GDR6 making it into next-gen cards sometime soon. As a whole, though, we're not quite sure what to make of all of the rumors. There's a lot of confusion out there, and even more conflicting viewpoints. Personally, we're betting that if Ampere is something to look out for in 2018, it'll probably just be a naming thing. It would be a pretty drastic move on NVIDIA's end to have built up an entirely different architecture to Volta, built specifically for gaming, and have told nobody about it. The more likely move would be to do what they normally do, which is use the main architecture as a base, then cherry pick the features gamers actually want, refine it a bit, and stuff it all into a GTX card. And there's nothing wrong with that. Gaming cards made from the bones of the Titan V would blow any current graphics card out of the water with little effort, and that's something I'm sure most of us are on board for. And I also want to address something that many of you discussed in the comments on the last Volta video. Many of you think that NVIDIA has no need to release new GPUs because they're currently selling out of everything that they can produce with Pascal for miners, since miners are essentially snapping up everything that they can roll off their production.
production line. And there's a couple of reasons why I think that's not true. Firstly, Nvidia isn't betting on this mining craze as evidenced by their lack of ramping up production. They're not in the interest of selling out to miners and they've clearly shown they're not swayed by this phenomenon, likely because they believe it to be a passing fad. Nvidia has publicly stated that they are for the gamer. And even if they're not taking a ton of steps to limit miners from getting their hands on GPUs, they've at least shown that they're not trying to prioritize miners ahead of the gamers. Them releasing Ampere indicates that their plans are firmly on releasing cards for gamers, not making bank from this mining phenomenon. And then secondly, Nvidia is guaranteed to have had this release planned for years at this point. Not releasing an architecture that they likely spent billions of dollars on would be a foolish business move. Withholding the next generation of GPUs because the current generation is selling so well would be a huge stifling move to their R&D department as well as to future innovations. And regardless of how Nvidia has treated mid-tier GPU releases, they've always been into pushing technical boundaries in many different spheres and keeping another architectural advancement to themselves would be a wholly uncharacteristic move for them regardless of how well the 10 series or cards are selling out right now. Mining has definitely changed the current GPU landscape, but it's not powerful enough to force a multi-billion dollar company into changing plans that it's had for years in the matter of a couple months. Even if we look at Intel, where they had direct market forces for innovation with competition from AMD, we can see that they were completely unable to pivot quickly enough to accommodate the new introduction into the market. Long term, the companies are stronger for it, but a couple month old stock shortage likely has no impact on what Nvidia's plans are for releasing the architecture that's likely already complete. At least that's my perspective. What do you think? You think Nvidia won't release a new architecture this year. Think we're getting Ampere. Think we're getting Volta. Were you yelling at your screen when we covered Volta and just dismissed Ampere in our last video? Let me know either down in the comments or over on Twitter. I'm at UF Disciple. And if you're looking to pick up current Pascal cards <laughs> or anything else for your gaming rig, even if you're holding out for Ampere, you can use our Amazon affiliate code that's in the video description. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but helps us keep on the lights here. Anyways, I am Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Cheers.